Good morning, class. We are looking at final exam review for the trigonometry. So trigonometry functions, identities, equations, and applications, and periodic functions and vectors, and you name it. Just about everything. Gonna answer the following question, name the quadrant that contains temporal point of T cards. So let me remind everybody <coughs> of <coughs> this unit circle, the x squared plus y squared equals one. What has coordinates x comma y? This is one, zero, zero, one. This is angle zero, power two, pi, three pi over two. So x squared plus y squared equals one. Sine t is y, cosine t is x, tan y, tan t is y over x. Uh, if it's not a unit circle, then it becomes, <clears throat> so as far as the definition of it, uh, tan, cotangent, cosecant, and secant, those are the, um, as follows, tan is the ratio of sine to cosine. So y over x, and the rest of them are the reciprocals. <coughs> so, you know, pi over 2 is 3.14 divided by 2, roughly. 1.57 pi is 3.142 pi is 6.28. So with that being the case, in the first quadrant, t is between these two numbers, 0 and 1.57. 1.57 corresponds to pi over 2. <clears throat> Excuse me. The second quadrant between these two numbers, 1.57 and 3.14. Third quadrant between 3.14 and 4.71. This one is between these two numbers, and therefore, this must be the answer because number 2 is between these two numbers. So the answer is quadrant two. Uh, we want to find the exact value of this. First and foremost, you remember that uh, with sine, cosine, secant, cosecant, two pi is the <coughs> period, period of the function. So you subtract two pi, four pi, so mul uh, multiples of two pi, okay? And 11 pi over 2, you know it's larger than 2 pi. It's in fact 5.5 in essence, right? Five and a half. So if we take off 4 pi, we get 3 pi over 2, and cosecant is your <clears throat> sine. Okay. So 1 over sine of 3 pi over 2. By the way, the reference arc would be pi over 2. And so this. <clears throat> 3 pi over 2, you know the sign is negative 1. So 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. When it convert to degrees, we remember that d over 180 is r over pi. Okay, so d is missing. r is 11 pi over 2. So d would be the product of these two divided by pi. That gives us 900. 90 degrees. It's very straightforward. <clears throat> Everything that we go over, you've seen it before. It's just a, just a reminder, okay? Uh, if the length of an arc S is 50 inches in a circle with a radius of 6, Find the angle theta. This arc subtends. Find the area of the signal. And I'm giving you a bunch of formulas. So what is given? S is 50. R is 6. First, what is given? And then we use the fact that S equals R theta. S equals R theta. Therefore, theta is s divided by r and it's a radius <coughs> precise answer the area of a sector half of r squared theta so one half 
you place the R with six, theta with 25 thirds. So six squared, there are two sixes. One of them goes away because two times three is six. So six times 25, 150 inch squared. Simplify. If we put sine squared plus cosine squared, we get one. By the way, these are Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one. One plus tan squared is secant squared. One plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. When we do that, these two give us one. One and cotangent squared is cosecant squared. Cosine of power six times secant of 13 pi over six. Uh, this one, 12 pi over six is equal to two pi. So we can take off 12 pi over six. So twelve pi over six or minus two pi. And <clears throat> secant, is the reciprocal of cosine. So it's equal to one. Sinusoidal so uh, all trigonometry functions are periodic with the period of two pi, except tangent and cotangent, the period is pi. Therefore, this is cotangent theta, this is cotangent theta, this is cotangent theta. So I have three of those. Find the amplitude, period, intercepts, and phase shift of the function and sketch the graph. There are different ways of graphing it. So first, uh, let's note find the amplitude. So we are going to so the amplitude is the absolute value of minus six or six. Uh, the period is two pi over omega or B, the coefficient of X. So two pi divided by pi over three. This is one way to write that sometimes we have, instead of B, we have omega. So that's a period. If you recall, a basic sign goes like that. Of course, the negative will flip it over. So we are looking at the phase shift. There is no phase shift. So all we have to do, divide the period by four, because we're going to go with four arcs, right? One, two, three, four. Four arcs divided by four results in three halves. Because there is no phase shift, we start with zero. Zero to three halves, three halves to three, three to nine halves and so forth. In other words, add three halves to three halves, you get three. Add it to three, you get nine halves. Add it, you get to six. So those are the ideas. Now, <clears throat> what I want to do, I want to look at this one without looking at this one because with the effect of that is to shift it up by this number. If it's positive, takes it up by four. If it's negative, takes it down by nine, by four. So it's if we ignore that and we just graph this one. I'm gonna graph this one, everybody. If I plug in zero, sine of zero is zero. If I plug in 1.5, or remember three halves is the same as 1.5. I get pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is positive 1 times negative 6 is, six is negative 6. If I plug in 3, cancels out sine of pi is 0. So that gives us 0. <coughs> 1.5 plus 
4.5 gives us 3 pi over 2. The sign of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. With negative 6, the product is positive 6. If I put 6 divided by 3 is 2, sine of 2 pi is 0. So we have those values. Zero, zero, three, zero, and six, zero. So zero, zero, three, zero, and six, zero. One point five minus six, one point five, and four point five positive six. Again, may not be too skinny. So this is a rough sketch for this guy. What about this guy? Just shift up by four. So all you have to do, add four to the y coordinates. So, so we're gonna move it up by four. Okay, the, it's called the midline. And so these numbers don't change, but the bottom, add four. Four minus two, four, 10, four. Here's the new one. Again. One cycle, a complete cycle. But if you want to <clears throat> extend it indefinitely, on both sides, that's what we get. And those are the points okay. that have been shifted up. Find the amplitude period intercepts and phase shift for this function and sketch it. And again, we have all the information. So first and foremost, we take the three out, everybody. So this becomes three times X and then pi divided by six. Now, the amplitude is the absolute value of this number, which is two. The phase shift minus pi over six. period, 2 pi divided by 3, 2 pi divided by 3. And we're going to cut this into four equal parts. We're going to divide this by 4. 2 pi divided by 12, or pi divided by 6. And we are going to go from negative pi over 6 to negative pi over 6 plus the period t. So from negative pi over 6, when you add these two, this is 4 pi over 6. Gives you 3 pi over 6 or pi over 2. So negative pi over 6 to pi over 2. And you keep on adding pi over 6. So the first one would be minus pi over 6 and 0. Then the next one is 0 to pi over 6. The next one pi over 6 to pi over 3. And the final one pi over 3 to pi over 2. So these are the four sub-intervals for the four arcs. Just as an example. Minus pi over 6. If I put it here, I get zero. Cosine of zero is one times two. I get two here. If I put zero, I get pi over six times three is pi over two. Cosine is zero. And we can calculate the rest of it. Okay. So let's plot this pair, this pair. Let's plot the pairs. This is one of them. Minus pi over 6, 2, roughly. 0, 0. Pi over 6, minus 2. Pi over 3, 0. Pi over 2, 2. So that's the graph. And that's a complete cycle. Complete period, complete cycle. If we want it to continue indefinitely, just by, as an example, we can add more points. There are more points, but if you were interested in the complete cycle, 
find the exact value, tan inverse of tan of negative two power three. So tan of negative two pi over three. That puts us in the third quadrant. Uh, by the way, the, clearly the uh, reference arc is pi over three. So it's the same as tan of pi over three. You just got to figure out positive or not. So just for the sake of argument, quickly, the moment you see that the reference arc is pi over three, all you have to do is figure out positive or negative. Negative to pi over three puts you in the third quadrant. Tangent is positive in the first and third quadrant. So tan inverse of square root of three. So let's remind everybody that none of the trigonometric functions are, pre, you know, one to one. We restrict their domain to make them one to one for sine. We went from negative power to two power two, and the range becomes negative one to one. Uh, sine inverse of sine x is x if it's x is between negative power two and power two, and sine of sine inverse between negative one and Tangent uh, pretty much covers the same thing. Of course, the endpoints are not included. Uh, cosine, we restricted it from zero to pi. Okay. And cosecant goes with sine. Secant goes for cos with cosine and cotangent goes with cosine. So in short, three of them from negative power two to power two and three of them from zero to pi. That's for the inverse because it gives you a unique answer. So, <clears throat> and that is power three. Secant inverse of square root of two, let's say we don't know that, we call it x, y, z, alpha, whatever you want to call it by definition, secant of alpha is square root of two. And so, because we are familiar with cosine, we're going to write the reciprocal of this. So cosine of alpha is the reciprocal of that, one over square root of two, which is the same as square root of two over two. Makes it powerful. Cosine inverse of one half, we don't know, let's say it's theta. By definition, cosine becomes one half and theta is pi over three. Tan of cosine inverse of square root of three over two. So we're gonna work on that. We're gonna let this be something. X, Y, Z, beta, you name it. By definition, cosine of beta is square root of three over two. It's one of those co common arc, arcs, so it becomes pi over six. So we want tan of pi over six, which is square root of three over three. This is undefined because 1.2 is larger than one. If you set this equal to alpha, cosine of alpha is 1.2, which cannot be. I'm going to write this expression as an algebraic expression. So tan inverse of u is equal to theta. Tan of theta is u, and we want sine of theta. And there are different ways of approaching them. For example, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, and sine is a question mark. We use that because one of those Pythagorean identities, one plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. <laughs> Excuse me. If I take a common denominator, I get u squared plus one over u squared. That's cosecant squared. Cosecant is one over sine. So cosecant squared is one over sine squared. And sine is plus minus, and we take the positive one. Sine and tan have the same sign. Uh, another approach quickly, again, there are different approaches you can take. If you do 
uh, draw a triangle. This is theta. Tan of theta by definition is the opposite over the adjacent. The op since this is u, let you make it a fraction, u over one. So all you have to calculate this by Pythagorean theorem, this one is squared, this one is squared, and then squared. So the question mark becomes one plus u squared. And <clears throat> sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And these are uh, formulas you've seen, sum and difference formulas. For example, sine of alpha plus beta, sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta, double angle formulas, okay, which gives rise, for example, cosine of two alpha is cosine squared minus sine squared, two cosine squared minus one, one minus two sine squared, okay. So uh, we can get sine squared of alpha from here. What sine squared alpha from here? Okay. And the half angle formulas. So in essence, uh, believe it or not, I'm sort of showing you the proof also. And now we can use those, for example, ones, the sine of 195, you know, it's uh, 390 over 2 because we're going to use the half angles. And as you know, 390 class is the same as 30 degrees, so it makes it a common arc. So because we want sine of 390 over 2, we're going to use this formula. Three hundred ninety over two puts you in the third quadrant. Sign is negative, so plus minus. But this one, third quadrant, right? And uh, three hundred ninety is the same as thirty. So you put square root of three over two. If you multiply the top, again. Okay. So this one is. Bottom is four and comes out as two, and the top becomes two minus square root of three and, and uh, inside the radicals. The 15 is half of 30 degrees. So we use the same formula. Cosine of 15 degrees plus minus that. Of course, this is the first quadrant and it's positive, so we pick the positive, everybody. And this is what we get. Uh, let me quickly write down this one is quadrant one, and this is two over two, and that's how you get. And I think I mentioned it even last time. I mean, these are the synapses and everything we have seen. So try this one class, okay? I want to prove the um, identities and I'm reminding you all the sum and difference formula. So we start with the left hand side. So cosine of power two, cosine of x minus sine of power two, sine of x. Uh, this is zero, this is one. So minus sine x is the answer. <clears throat> so again we start with the left hand side because which is more complicated tan theta over secant theta tan is sine over cosine secant is 1 over cosine and if you multiply the top 
and the bottom by cosine theta, you get sine theta over one over sine theta. It's that simple. You know, sine of two alpha is two sine alpha cosine alpha. So from here, we go to the right side, sine of two times pi over eight. And two times pi over eight is pi over four, sine is squared up to over two. Same thing here, we move to the left, two times alpha, that means two times 45 degrees. And sine of 90 degrees is one. Cosine of seven power 12, you may notice it's the sum of three power 12, which is power four and four power 12. That three power 12, power four, four power 12, power three. So those are both common arcs. So cosine of power four, cosine of power three minus sine of power four, sine of power. Square root of 2 over 2, 1 half. Square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 halves. And all of them have the same denominator, 4. Square root of 2 times 1 is square root of 2 minus square root of 6. We want to find the exact value. And again, we are reminding everybody of those formulas. So you notice this is cosine alpha, cosine beta plus sine alpha, sine beta. So we are looking at this one. I hope you see that. So that's cosine of alpha minus beta, cosine of pi over 12 minus pi pi over 12, which makes it minus 4 pi over 12. Minus 4 pi over 12 is the same as minus pi over 3. But cosine is an even function, so it's the same as cosine of pi over 3 or 1 half. So again, I want to make sure everybody understands that. This one is minus pi over 3. But cosine of minus pi over 3 is the same as cosine of pi over 3 because it, cosine is an even function. What about 105? We're going to cut it into two pieces, 60 and 45. And we are going to use this one. Cosine 60, cosine 45, minus sine 60, sine 45. <coughs> this is 1 half, square root of 2 over 2, minus the square root of 3 over 2. This is square root of 2 over 2. And so, they have the denominator for this square root of 2 minus square root of 6. We're going to establish the um, identity. The left hand side is more complicated. We start with that and we get to the right tangent. Sine over cosine. And we take a common denominator, which is cosine times 1 plus sine. So sine times 1 plus sine theta, cosine times cosine theta. Sine times 1 is sine theta. This is sine squared, and this is cosine squared. So you take a common denominator. Clearly, these two change to 1. So you have sine theta plus 1 which cancels out 1 plus sine theta. They are the same, aren't they? These two are the same. So you get 1 over cosine, and 1 over cosine is the same as secant. <coughs> uh, let's take a common, we start with the left-hand side, and let's take a common denominator. Uh, so when I take the common denominator, I get sine theta, cosine theta, sine 3 theta times cosine theta minus cosine 3 theta, sine theta. 
and we notice this is sign of alpha minus beta, right? If you look at this one, you go from the right to left. So the top is sign of three theta minus theta. What about this one? We know sign of two alpha is two sine alpha cosine alpha. So this is half of that, right? So this is sine of two theta. This is half of sine of two theta. These two cancel each other. One over one half is two. Want to solve the equation that involves cosine squared and sine squared? Because this is sine, we're going to change this to 1 minus sine squared. If it were cosine, we would change this one. And so you have 1 minus 2 sine squared plus sine x. And since we like this to be positive, we uh, multiply both sides by negative 1 or we move it. And we put it in descending order for the sake of factoring. If you can factor the way this is fine, otherwise you can say, for example, this is y, and so you have two y squared minus y minus one and minus y minus one and uh, factor in any event factor. And it's a simple factor in class because this is two, you have no choice but to go with two and one. This is negative one, one and negative one, you have to work it out till it works out. This gives you sine x equals, okay, so this is you or this is you. This gives you sine x equals negative one half. This gives you sine x equals one. This is very straightforward. It's just pi over two. But what about this one, negative one half? Remember, if it were positive one half, let me just write this. I want to be clear. Uh, reference arc would be pi over six or sine of theta equals one half. So your reference arc is pi over six. Negative one half. Sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrant. So add pi over six to pi, you get seven pi over six. Subtracted from two pi, you get 11 pi over six. Again, just so you know how you arrive at the answer. We want to solve this. Everything involves cosine, just factor. And again, if you have a difficult time factoring, change this to, let's say, x, 2x squared minus x minus 1. So either this one is 0 or this one is 0. This gives you cosine theta equals negative 1 half. This, this gives you 1. 1 is easy. That gives you 0. But what about the negative 1 half? Again, let's look at 1 half. That cosine x equals one half and reference arc, it makes reference arc as pi over three. Now negative one half, cosine is negative in the second and third quadrant. In the second quadrant, pi minus pi over three gives you 2 pi over 3 pi plus pi over 3 for the third quadrant, 4 pi over 3. <clears throat> and we're done. And write them in this way. What happens when we have a multiple angle? And again, for sine x, we know the answer is one half, that is pi over six and five pi over six. That we know that, right? Because sine is positive in the first and second quadrant, but x is three theta. When you have multiple angles, the uh, steps are as follows. 
So 3 theta is pi over 6. You write it as pi over 6 plus 2m pi or 2k pi, and you divide by 3. You set that equal to the other one, 5 pi over 6. You divide by 3. Okay, you 2 and pi and you divide by 3 and you get this. Now the answers are theta equals n, n equals 0, 1, 2. Okay, because this is 3, you go all the way to this number minus 1. <clears throat> Maybe we should say this is n theta and this is k is 0, 1, all the way to n minus 1. That's another way of approaching it. Uh, so, So let's do that. Let's plug in zero. <coughs> if you plug in zero, you get pi over eight. If you plug in one, you get pi over 18 plus two pi over three, which is 13 pi over 18. If you plug in two, you get pi over 18 plus 25, uh, 24 pi over 18, which makes it 25 pi over 18. So these are the answers. Because that's 4 pi over 3. We do the same thing here, and we get the following. A right triangle. First and foremost, let's remind everybody of the right triangle. It follows Pythagorean. Theorem a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Sine is a over c. And the cosine is b over c. If you look at this one, we have one. For this angle, the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent is the opposite over the a over b, and so on. Um, <coughs> so. A is 8, B is 2, C is 90 degrees, so it's 90 degrees. So if we have these two sides, we can find the last one by Pythagorean theorem. Uh, Plus 4, 68, and it's 2 squared of 17 because 68 is 4 times 17. So when you take the square root of that, you see that, and roughly 8.24. Uh, now, we want the angles. Obviously, this is 90 degrees. All you have to do, use a tangent for one side. For example, uh, this angle, the tangent is the opposite lowercase b over a. Why do we use that? <clears throat> because it's given. We want to use the given. 2 over 8 or 1 fourth. So b is tan inverse of 1 fourth. You have to use a calculator. You go with the calculator, it gives you in radian. If it's in radian mode, 14.03. And so subtract that from 90 degrees and you get the last one. And you have all the information. Now you can write all the information in one spot. The balloon is flying at a height of 600 feet. I replay what the Statue of Liberty, what is the angle of depression from the balloon to some airport that is five miles from this the Statue of Liberty, draw a diagram, one mile 50 to 80 feet. You can do this without the drawing class. So number one, let's remind everybody of the angle of the, uh, um, elevation versus, versus depression. Here's the horizontal line, angle of side. If you look up, is the angle of elevation, down is the depression. Angle of elevation is the angle formed by the line of sight and horizontal plane for an object above the horizontal. 
angle of depression is the angle of angle formed by the line of sight and the horizontal plane for an object below the horizontal. So with that being the case, here's the balloon, okay? Here's 600 feet, here's an airport, five miles away, and here's the angle of depression, which is of interest to us. And this is identical to this, okay? Known as alternate interior angles. And so turn of this is the opposite over the <coughs> adjacent. And we have to go either with miles or feet. Both of them must be identical. So it's easier to change this to five times 50 to 80. And theta is 10 inverse of this number. Using a calculator, we say 1.30 number one the x to the design, we change it to two again, however many uh, decimals they ask you. I want to get one more question for today. An aircraft is spotted by two observers who are a thousand feet apart. As the airplane passes over the line joining them, each observer takes a sighting of an angle of elevation to the plane uh, to the plane as indicated in the figure, how high is the plane? And we have the setup. This is 40 degrees, this is 35 degrees. <clears throat> so let's call this distance H, call this distance Y. Okay, remember we are interested in H. <coughs> So this angle, PRQ is 105. Why is that? Because 40 plus 35, 75. And the sum of interior angles is 180. That's why. So, if we go with the, here's the sine law, sine A over A, or sine B over B, or sine C over C, cosine law A squared plus B squared plus C squared minus 2B C cosine A, let's go with that. So sine of one over, uh, 105 over 1000 is sine of 35 over one. You have to find one of these to find H. <clears throat> so this is 50 and 55, obviously, because, because this with this must be 90, this with this must be 90 also, right? So I hope everybody is clear on that. So <clears throat> Y, this side, is the product of these two divided by sine of 105. Using a calculator gives you this side. In feet, that's what it means, in feet. Now, in this, triangle, sine of 40 is the opposite that we are looking for, the height over the hypotenuse that we found. And so <clears throat> sine of 40 times this, the product of these two is the height. And it's 381.69 feet. 